Alrighty, y'all. Welcome back to the Complete Husband's Handbook Podcast. My name is Daniel, and today we're going to be continuing part two of Men and Change. Now, before we had talked about why men change, today we're going to be talking about why men don't change. Now, I'm going to I'm going to repeat what I had said in the first introduction, which is we often say, you know, whoa, men need to change, you know, why doesn't he change? And really the question is not why doesn't he, it's does he have a reason to? And these are reasons why men just choose not to change. And the first one is there's no need to. A lot of, you can't really call them men, adult males, and yes, there is a difference, feel comfortable with the status quo. They're comfortable with their job, they're comfortable with their relationship, they're comfortable where they live, what they have. They really don't have a a sense of ambition. They don't want anything more. They have their trappings, they have their... TV and their streaming services and their video games and their jerseys or shoes or whatever the case may be. And that's all they've ever wanted. So that's it. Because they've never been presented with anything more of, hey, you know, all this is great, but there's more to life. And they're comfortable not just in their in their work and in their relationships, you know, with their friends or family. But with love, like there's no push or drive with love. Now, I know (laughs) because I have quite a few female friends, some of them have said to me in the past that they've told to their exes that um, if we don't, you know, get married or I don't have a ring on my finger, we're not engaged, I'm going to leave you than they never do. Then when you bring that up, they get pissed off. And there's one thing that men sometimes need, and that's a kick in the ass, just to get it going, just to get moving. And a lot of these men who are comfortable, who don't quote-unquote want to change, don't feel the need to change, is because they know those threats are weak. If a man's making good money, and he's got a good place to live, and he's got a halfway decent car. He knows the woman's not going to leave him. He's paying for her stuff. She ain't going nowhere. And sadly, that comes with weak women. Weak women perpetuate the cycle of weak men. And weak men perpetuate the cycle of weak women. It's sad, but it's one of those things. So ladies, if you're in a relationship where... Your man has no drive. If you're going to make a threat, follow through with it. Otherwise, you're the much as the blame as he is. Now, the next step in this is there's no desire to change. Now, there's a difference between need. Like when you need something, you need food, you need water, you need air. A desire to change, a lot of these men, well, adult males, have no sense of family. They have no sense of community. They're perfectly fine living in an apartment, one or two bedroom. They have no plan for the future. They have no desire to to grow and expand, not just their own space, but as a family unit, because they probably came from single-parent households. Let's be honest here. This growing thing of... I'm single and don't need no man, well, that's fine, but but you're growing a bitch, dude. That's exactly what you're doing. You're creating weak men so that another woman has to come and clean up your mess. Now, are there bad men out there? Yes, there are. Everybody knows that. Are there bad women out there? Yes, there are. Everybody knows that. But if you're a single parent, because you choose to be. Now, divorce or abuse, things like that, there are circumstances that warrant such a thing. But if you choose to be a single parent and you choose to raise a kid, 
that child not only has no point of reference for the gendered parent that's missing, but they have no example to follow. So they're going to be the lone wolf. They're going to be the the fake alpha who thinks that all life is is I go to work, I come home, I don't do nothing with my life. There's no sense of exploring. There's no sense of being a part of anything. They're on social media, but they really don't contribute. They have friends, and they'll go out and they'll do stuff, but they're really not bonding. They're there. They have a quote-unquote good time, which usually involves alcohol, but they don't do anything. They don't have those deep discussions. They're not your quote-unquote ride-or-die friends. So I call them as fake alphas. They're what the world deems, oh, this person's an alpha because he works out all the time and he's got a decent job and a decent car, but when you look at them, there's no desire for anything more. Now, on the flip side of that coin, you have men that are resigned, who maybe have tried, or jaded is probably a better term. They don't feel like they deserve happiness. I've had the opportunity to work with many veterans, and some of them who've seen war and, and you know, been through the shit, feel that because of what they've done in defense of their, their country or their duty, they don't feel like they deserve happiness. Or maybe they're pen penitent and maybe take this sense of repentance a little too far where they're still hung up on something that they've done and they don't realize that part of repenting and part of change is bettering oneself and forgiving yourself or they're just settled in their ways going back to the to the not need to they're resigned to be the cool uncle i myself have fallen into that category when i was younger uh, before I met my wife, where I was perfectly okay. I was working 12 to 16 hour shifts, hang out with, with my siblings, hang out with their kids, hang out with my friends, spending money on people. I was okay with that because I had had two failed fiancés and I was okay with being the cool uncle. In fact, one of my sister-in-laws said, you think you're the cool uncle, but you're really not. You're just the one that, that gives them money. But, you know, we as men need to understand that, you, you know, we're not going to change until we want to. And a lot of men now are protecting our hearts because we've been hurt. We've put ourselves out there. And like I said, I've had two two fiancés, and both of them had cheated on me. So when I met my wife, or when when I met her originally, I should say, I wasn't looking for love. I, I didn't want to be there. I had no desire to start dating again. I just wanted to focus on work, and that was it. Because I was, I was protecting myself, my core identity. I didn't want to get messed up again. And where a lot of people say men don't show emotion, men don't love the way women do, that's true. But when we go all in, we go all in. And it's hard to recover from something like that. Or men are resigned to push themselves out of society. They don't feel like society has the same values they do. So they self-exile or, or they... In, they uh, what's the word I'm looking for? They impose. There we go. A forced exile. They buy some land in the middle of nowhere and don't want to contribute. And that can be part of other things too. But I have friends of mine who uh, have their family units and they go out there and they're just chilling and, uh, for better or worse, they uh, live away from everybody. And I mean everybody. So so what ends up happening is um, their kids don't get to see the other parts of the family. And that's just as bad as spending way too much time with your family. 
But another reason why men don't change is because we're broken. Now, as men, we put a lot of stock in our physicality, our strength, our ability to to repopulate or to have kids. And when something isn't the way it should be, we 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 have a sense of longing or or a sense of loss, almost like an amputee where if we can't run as fast or push as hard or go as strong, then we feel like something's wrong and we feel broken. And that is a very real thing, and it's something nobody ever talks about. And yes, you know, being paralyzed or the loss of a limb, those are very real things. But when your body doesn't work the way it's supposed to, We feel it, we recognize it, and we want to fix that problem before we move on. Or we're broken mentally, and that just not includes mental health, but just the stress of work. Sadly, gone are the days where most men work outside. Now we're chained to a desk, sitting on our ass, doing nothing. I mean, yeah, I mean, I do work in the logistics field. So there is a lot of sitting, but there's no sense of accomplishment with a lot of jobs. My job, I can go and I can say, oh, we did this or that or the other, and we were able to move this amount of stuff to these locations. There is that sense of accomplishment. But for other people who just do data entry or customer service or wherever, they don't have that that sense of, I did something. Men need that. I remember as a kid, I would ask my dad about being a fireman, and he would say, oh, yeah, we went over there, and we did this, and we did that, and we did this. And, like, he he drove down the street and pointed out areas he fought fires at. And you could hear the pride in his heart and the excitement and the, yeah, we did that as a team. Almost like they, you know, slayed a dragon or, or conquered a piece of land or something. And we don't have that now. We just don't. And it's that mental weight that's just crushing us because we can't be men. So we don't change because we're mentally broken. And pharmaceutical companies now just want to push pills. They don't want to fix the problem. They want to perpetuate the patient. Here, have more pills so I can get my brand new Mercedes Benz. Or, hey, take this treatment, which may or may not work, but could fuck you up even more. Yeah, that's not great. And with those two being broken physically and mentally, it always affects the emotions. When we cannot physically express ourselves, when our mind gets bogged down or weighed down, our emotions are through the roof. They're either top of the top and everything's great and you know sunshine and rainbow farts or we're in deep depression there is no in between it's sad but it's true and everybody knows this but very few people talk about it so that's another reason why men don't change they're broken they need to heal first and The last bit is we're either spiritually broken or our core belief system is broken. I grew up in a very religious household. I'm still very religious. But I was given the freedom to explore other religions. Not just other Christian religions, but other religions throughout the world. Jewish, Muslim, Buddhist, Taoist, Zen... All probably all the ones you could think of, even some of the more what people now would call myths, the Greeks and the Vikings and all of that lot, you know, I was able to look at it, and I was able to really dig deep into the mythology and into the lore and into the scriptures and, and their belief system to really see what worked for me. I wasn't chained to some idea of what deity was, I was allowed to look into that. 
but sadly a lot of people aren't. They're forced into a religion, but never allowed to research it, never allowed to study it. So when a scandal happens, which inevitably will, they're shooken to their core, and they don't know what to do, and they don't know what to believe anymore. Whether that's in a church, in a government official, in a community leader, in a, in a cause, those things break people, especially men, because we look for leaders to, to model ourselves after. And where this has gotten kind of kind of heavy really quick, um, we really need to look at why why men don't change. Because there's always an underlining factor, and that factor can be healed and it can be fixed. Although fix is probably not the right word to put it, it can be healed and it can become solidified again to turn from a weakness to a strength so i'll look f i'll look forward to hearing from y'all again and we'll see y'all on the next one